How beautiful is that leaf, guys? Isn't that pretty? So this is a leaf from my Chicago Hardy fig. Hey everybody, it's Heather here from Here She Grows, and today I thought we could talk about my fig. Many of you, when you watched my vegetable garden tour earlier in the year, wanted to know if this was a fig, fiddle, uh, a fig tree, and indeed it is. I grow a variety called Chicago Hardy. I'm in zone 5B, I'm in the southwest suburbs of Chicago, so growing a Chicago Hardy fig seems apropos for my growing environment. So Chicago Hardy Fig is hardy to zone 5, which is perfect. Um, you can grow this in the ground or in a container. If you grow it in the ground, it's going to very likely die back. Um, and it'll start, it'll grow fresh, fresh stems from, from the ground up. I didn't want to go that route, and I really wanted to use my fig tree as the centerpiece for my vegetable garden, which it has become because I've planted it, I don't know if you can see here, in the center part of my hog panel trellis. So. Um, and it just, I wanted it to be a nice tree form every year without having to wait for it to start from scratch again from the ground. So I grow this, my, uh, my fig tree, in a container. So the, fi the container that I chose was a um, smart pot. They're made in the USA in Oklahoma, I believe. And the really nice thing about the smart pot, not only is it fabric and very lightweight, they have handles on them, so they're easy to carry. Um, you can go to the Smart Pot website. I called their company to find out what they would suggest for a, a fig tree. And they said a 15 or a 20 gallon container. I went with the 15 simply because every gallon gets heavier and heavier and I wanted to be able to move this as easily as possible. So 20 just seemed too big. 15's working fine. This has been my first year. This is the first year for the fig tree to be in a 15 gallon Smart Pot. We're gonna move it shortly. Uh, into the garage for to send it into its dormancy period for the winter but um, you can definitely grow these in containers uh, you can grow them in the ground too whatever you whatever your preference I just like I like the instant gratification of having a tree form right in the spring and not having to wait for it to start from scratch again you could also heal these in I could overwinter this in the ground and bury it if I wanted to I don't want to do that either so what I allow it to do is um, go dormant so a few light frosts have hit this already. We've got another good frost coming. Ooh, um, we've got another frost coming in a couple days toward the end of the week. I'll let it hit it again. And what that tells the fig tree to do, it's telling it it's time to shut down. It's time to go dormant. And you can see here that my fig is starting to go dormant. The leaves are yellowing. So that's what's happening and that's what it's supposed to do. I've also pulled back on watering. We got some rain yesterday, obviously. It got, it got a good amount of rain, but I'm not hand watering it. And like anything grown in a container, if this is the route you choose to go, they do tend to dry out more than if they were to be planted directly in the ground. But um, it's a small price to pay. So I like the Smart Pot also because in this type of container, you don't get the root girdling that you would get in other containers. So root girdling is when your plant basically just keeps the root, there's nowhere for the roots to go, so they keep circling the pot until they eventually choke the plant out. That doesn't happen in a smart pot. The smart pot um, allows for what they call uh, air pruning. So it's a root pruning system, but instead of girdling the, the root ball, the plant roots grow to the edge of the pot and then they spider out. So instead of circling, they spider out and creating more points of entry for nutrients and water for, for the, uh, the plant. And it's worked great. That's what's happened here. I've got a really healthy fig tree that was very productive this year, probably more so, and I allowed it to be more productive this year. My first year that I had it, I took all the fruit off of it because I wanted to encourage a healthy root system and a strong canopy, and I didn't want the plant to focus on fruit production. Last year, I allowed it to fruit a little, little bit, took some of the fruit off of it though because again, I wanted to keep that root system growing. This year is when I graduated it, this spring I gradu graduated it to the 15 gallon Smart Pot and really let it fruit and they were delicious. So prior to this fig tree, I had no experience with a, with a fig. This simply ca came to be because I had an hors d'oeuvre at a party many years ago that were, it was figs and cheese and it was prosciutto wrapped figs. It was delicious. And I said, if I ever get the opportunity to grow, grow a fig, I'm going to. And lo and behold, I was grocery shopping several years ago and came across a package of two little sticks that were probably no bigger than my pinky finger. And because I have a hard time parting with plants, decided that um, I would grow them together and intertwine the, the, uh, the trunks so they'd have a twisted trunk and they've done well. And I've just graduated the containers up every year. 
So what you can do is if you decide you want to grow a fig tree in a container and you want to go the smart pot, smart pot route, you can um, go to the Smart Pot website. I'll put the link below. And they actually have information based on the crop that you're going to be growing on their recommendation, what size they recommend. So like I said, I did a 15 gallon here, um, but it's a really good resource to use based on what you intend to grow in the container. So I'm letting some frost hit this tree to allow to tell the tree it's time to go to sleep. It's time to go dormant. And then they're, they're forecasting a possible freeze. I don't want to freeze to hit this because I don't want any die back on this tree. So I'll be bringing the plant in probably Friday evening, um, putting it in the garage. And then once all the leaves are off of it, I'll pick up all the leaves, clean up the area. If you see anything on the spiders or anything, I clean everything up. And then um, I bring it into the basement. And prior to doing that, I've pulled back on watering. I'm not watering as frequently. And I don't fertilize at all anymore. So the, the last fertil fertilizer application happened August 1st. And then I just let the thing, let the plant go. Uh, I use a product by Dr. Earth that's formulated specifically for fruit and nut trees. And I just follow the, ins the package instructions. So whatever product you choose to use, uh, just follow the instructions. And a lot of times they're based, your, the amount you would apply would be based on the diameter of the trunk of the tree. So um, just follow your package instructions. And I'll put a link to the Dr. Earth product at the bottom of the video as well. So the next step is, and the beauty of the Smart Pot is it has handles. So my husband and I will be moving this into the garage next, and then it'll completely defoliate, and it will look naked like all the other trees that lose their leaves at this time of the year. And then the final stop for the winter, and for probably till the end of March, will be a completely darked out basement. Um, my basement is a heated basement, so we do put it in the coldest part of the basement near a, a, an outside wall. It receives no light, nothing, and very little water. I don't want the plant to dry out completely because then it will, it'll die. So I check it once a month. I keep a couple gallons of water that I've harvested from my rain barrel uh, next to the plant. So I simply just put my, a finger two to three inches down into the plant. If it feels damp, then I don't water it. If it feels dried out, then I give it maybe about a quart of water just to taste. You don't want to completely saturate it because then you run the risk of root rot. So it's just kind of a balancing act. And uh, sometimes I find they, a, a little bit more neglect, which I'm good at, by the way. Um, a forgetfulness sometimes, like I do with my house plants too, they tend to do better as opposed, if I was, as opposed to if I was overly careful about their uh, health and overwatering, because then I'm sure gonna kill it. So um, this has worked, this procedure process has worked for me for the last three years. And this year I had a wonderful fruit set the only thing that I battle is timing it right to get to the fruit before all the wasps get to it because it, the wasps love these things too. So I will be moving this into the garage next and then into the basement. And the most important thing you can do is not overwater it, but you don't want to not water it. So it's just checking. If you don't mind getting a little dirt under your nails in the winter time, check it every month or maybe every three to four weeks just to see what the moisture level is at. And then if it feels dry, give it a drink. And then I will do a follow-up video around the time I'm going to start bringing out, reintroducing the, uh, the Chicago fig to the sun. And I don't want to shock it, so I definitely will not be putting it, throwing it right out into the sun. It's a gradual process. And um, so that's that. And I hope this has helped you figure out how to grow a fig tree in a, in a cold climate. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it or subscribe to my channel. And um, all the links for the information on the things I use to grow my Chicago Hardy Fig, and there aren't many. It's a very, very simple thing to grow. And check out this leaf. The leaves are gorgeous. Look at this leaf. How pretty is that? They are absolutely beautiful, especially this where it's turning yellow now. So I hope you grow some figs. Um, it's definitely an interesting thing to grow. and. I have some Middle Eastern friends who came back here last year and um, when they saw my fig tree were shocked They're like oh my gosh you have figs they want to know how I grew them here and so it is definitely a conversation piece um, very very flavorful and it's something that's 
fruiting in September and uh, mine's finished fruiting but it, I had a wonderful fruit set this year and it's definitely something that's worth trying um, if for no other reason than to say you've done it. It's a fun thing to do. It's interesting. It's a beautiful plant and uh, I hope you grow figs next year and thanks for watching.